Welcome to the Media Jungle. We are talking with Kate Robards today, a comedian, a friend, uh, and we're going to be talking about how Instagram negatively affects particularly young women, um, the Facebook uh, revelations of their internal report show that that it increases depression, loneliness, um, eating disorder, suicide, a lot of things. Kate, welcome to the media jungle. Hi, Alex. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I think now there's a sort of a perception that Instagram is reality. You know, that's what that's reality. That's who you are. That's your identity. And it's like creating your identity when you don't really know what your identity is and you create it and then you have to live up to it or you have to maintain it. And then it becomes stress and it becomes also the studies have shown it's become it becomes more addictive. Even as you get more depressed, you get more addicted. Right. Oof. oof. Yeah, it's the the addiction loop is really something because it's almost like ingrained in us. And I um, I know that they use the same the creators of Instagram and, and even Google mail, they use the same tactics that people who do gambling machines use to get people addicted to gambling mm-hmm. as far as like notifications to alert us, to give us that little dopamine. And I will sometimes feel a jolt when I'm like, Oh, I posted something. I'm like, look at all these people looking at my story. This is so great. And I'm like, wait, this means nothing. But then because people are making a living and doing things like I've written for influencers before, it's like, oh, no, it does mean something. It does have value. It has actual monetary value. How how do you break that cycle of wanting to keep up with the Joneses and how do you deal with that? I deal with it by reminding myself to be community focused and having a real network of friends around me to keep me grounded. And I think that's so crucial to remind you that like, that's not who you are. Um, but you really, I think, I think it's going to be really important for kids to separate themselves from their online appearance, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I've studied performance and performativity of self is even a thing. Like I'm performing the role of, you know, I'm a, a cisgendered woman and we all have, you know, you're performing the role of a, of a bald man, with a beard. I'm, I'm not bald. And, <laughs> I'm, I'm by choice, by choice. But you know, these are like, this is our presentation. You could put on a wig, you could put on. Um, yep. So we're all doing this performance. And I think, you know, even just like, I think they should start teaching this in school of um, separating yourself from who you are online. And I think even, you know, my fellow millennials can get so focused on this is who I am. It's what I do. This is who I am. It's how I look online. I think at the end of the day, we're humans and we need to focus on like, it's so cheesy, but what's inside our heart. What what do you think about, um, kids who want to be an influencer when they grow up? Once again, I, um, I've written for the shorty awards several times. And so I've worked with really big influencers who are amazing and I admire and respect them. And I also work with a lot of actors and I think influencers and actors and comedians have a lot of in common. And I, I know a lot of comedians and writers who, you know, there's work for influencers and it's an industry, but I think people, especially young children need to understand that it's kind of like an actor, you know, they're playing the role. They're literally doing a, a brand partnership and they're selling themselves or at least an angle or a facet of themselves. And that's not who they are. And you have to still figure out who you are. Yeah. Yeah. One thing about social media too, I like, I've gained a lot of friends and I've also lost a lot of friends because of social media or because of comments or because of like, I don't like that, what that person posted. It like creates this, you gain friends, but then you also, when was the last time you lost a friend from like commenting on their stuff or them commenting on your stuff? So I went to this unfollow app and, um, and I got so upset with one of my friends. I said, you unfollowed me. We're yeah, friends. people get very upset. They take it super but, personal. And my friend was taking a break from Instagram. I was humiliated. I was like, I am so sorry. You're going through so much and I am so petty and I should not care about this. But I say this to say I've had, you know, I, I've, I've been very vocally political um, <laughs> and I've had, I'm from, you know, rural Texas and I have conservative family and friends. And I believe that we can share differences of opinions and 
I've had people say, you know, delete this or I'm going to stop following you. And I mean, that's their prerogative. That has what other people think of me is not, has none of my business. But I think going back to, we should be able to separate social media from like who we are is so crucial. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day. And uh, I hope to speak to you soon. It's always good to talk to you, my friend. Yeah.